Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And today we're going to be solving the leak out question, how's robber two? All right. So in this question, we are a professional robber and we plan to rob houses along the street and each house has a certain amount of money stashed. All houses in this place are arranged in a circle. So this means that the first house is the neighbor of the last one. So it's cyclical. Uh, meanwhile, adjacent houses have a security system connected and it will automatically contact the police if two adjacent houses were broken into at the same night. So in simple words, we can't break into adjacent houses. So given a list of non-negative integer nums, which represents the amount of money in each house, we want to return the maximum amount of money we can rob at that night. And obviously we do not want to get caught. Okay, so one thing I want to point out before actually going into this question is this question is almost exactly the same to house robber one over here. And house robber one, the only difference between these two questions is that the houses here are arranged in a circle and the houses here are not arranged in a circle. So in simple words, after the first house, we go all the way up to the last house and there's no connection between the first and the last house. Whereas in a house robber two, there is a connection. Okay, and uh, one last thing is I would highly recommend, so I made a video on uh, house robber one. So I would highly recommend that you at least watch that video or at least understand how house robber one works because what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to kind of build up on the idea of house robber one. And if you don't want to watch the video, I'll be touching through the topics uh, slightly, but if you want a more in-depth explanation, please do watch the video. Okay. So real quickly, let's just understand the question. So we can rob houses, but the thing is when we uh, rob a house, uh, the adjacent house, if we rob two adjacent houses, we're going to have the cops called on us. So in this case, uh, if you rob house number, this house over here, we can't end up robbing this house. And if we rob this house, we can't rob either this house, the first house or the last house, because if we do that, the cops will get caught. And similarly, since it's a cycle, if we do rob the last house, we cannot rob the first house since it is in a cycle. So that being said, let's say we have rob house one, we cannot end up robbing anything. And the reason for that is because, well, three is adjacent to it and so is two because it's a cycle. So let's just look at this question over here. And so let's say we rob house one. So if we rob house one, we end up with $2, but we actually can't rob any more houses after that because three is adjacent to two. And since it's a cycle, the last house is connected to the first one. Similarly, if we rob the second house, we actually end up with $3. And again, we cannot rob the other two houses since they're adjacent. And same goes for the last house. And obviously, because uh, we can only rob one house in this case, we're going to drop that one house which has the most money. And in this case, that uh, house is house is the second house, which has a total of $3. So that's how much money we're making tonight. Okay, and then uh, let's just look at one more example over here, one, two, three, one. And what they did is they robbed house one, and then they robbed house three, giving us a total of $4. All right, so this is a dynamic programming problem. And what I'm going to do over here actually is I'm just going to copy the code from the previous uh, program and I'll just kind of explain it real quickly. And we're going to add on to it in order to fit uh, the requirements of this question. Okay. All right, so this over here is the code from our previous question, which is house robber one. And over here, the first thing we're going to check is if we do not have any houses to rob, well, we don't make any money, so we return zero. Then over here, if the length or the number of houses we have is equal to or less than two, and in that case, that means we can only rob one house. But one thing you want to know is this over here, this condition actually exists for this house over here where the houses are not in a cyclical order. But when the houses are in a cyclical order, like we saw in example one over here, if there are three houses, even then we can only rob from one house. So that's what we're going to do. So if the number of houses we have is less than or equal to three, then in that case, we're going to return whatever the maximum one value is within those three or uh, less houses. So three, two or one houses. All right, perfect. So then after that, we made a dynamic programming array filled with zeros and it had the same length as the number of houses that we had. And what we did is the zeroth house over here was initialized with the nums zero. And the reason we're doing that is because we're going to just make the assumption that we're robbing the very first house. And this is the assumption that we have to kind of change for this new question. But again, just remember that this is in a case where the houses are not cyclical. Okay. So the zero index has the same value as num zero. So we're assuming that we uh, rob the house at the zero index. Now for the first index, once we go there, we have two options. 
we can either rob from whatever is at the first index or we can not rob and carry on what we robbed from the previous day. And if we plan on carrying on what, what we robbed from the previous house, then in that case, we're gonna choose nums zero. But if you wanna rob uh, the current house that we're on, we're gonna choose nums one. And what are we gonna choose? We're gonna choose the maximum between those two because well, we wanna make the most amount of money that we want, that we can. So this for loop over here is gonna do for x in range. We're gonna start at two since we already took care of zero and one. And after that, uh, we're gonna go all the way up to the ending. Okay, so what we're gonna do is each time we're gonna go to that certain index and we have to make a decision. So the decision we're making is we either carry on from what we had from our previous loot. So we're gonna assume that we looted the previous house. So if we looted the previous house, we would go to one house before it, right? And if we looted that, then in this case, we're not going to loot anything. So the amount of money we have is gonna be carried on from whatever the previous loot is. Now, the second option we have is to actually loot the current house that we're in. And to do that, we're gonna have nums x, which is the current amount of money for the house that we're in. And we're gonna add the amount of money from two houses before, since that money gets added up. And the reason we're adding two houses before is because obviously we cannot rob one house before that. And the reason we can't rob one house because adjacent houses. So we have to go back two houses. We're gonna take how much of our money we had from there, and we're gonna add that to how much of the value is there in the current house. And what that's telling us, we had this much money. So this is how much money we used to have. And now once we rob the current house that we're on, we're gonna have a total of this much money. And that's all that's happening. And at the very ending, we're gonna return the very last area. So this over here is for the case when it's not cyclical. So when it's cyclical, we wanna just change it up a bit. So to do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna convert this into a function. So I'll just call this function a helper function. And what we'll be giving it is gonna be the dynamic programming array directly. Okay, and uh, we're gonna put all of this inside of our function. So since we're already giving it our dynamic programming array, I'm gonna get rid of this over here. Okay, now the question is, what exactly is our dynamic programming array going to consist? In the very beginning or in the previous code that I showed you, it had all zeros. So that's one way to do it. And the reason, and when it had all zeros, it's very important that we actually initialize our zeroth element or else in that case, we would just end up with all zeros, right? And we wouldn't get a proper n. And in that case, uh, dp1 wouldn't have a proper result since dp0 will always have a, result, a value of zero. So in order to get the right value, we have, we make dp0 a value of nums zero. But one thing we can actually do over here is we can directly input whatever the nums are. Now in this case, what exactly are we gonna give it? So there's two things that we're gonna give it. So let's say we have nums over here and there's three different uh, or four different elements that we have inside of it, or actually five, okay? So these are five different elements and they're all different. They're all, they all represent each house. So in this case, this house and this house are connected. So in simple words, if we rob in house one, we will never be able to rob at this house or this house, but I'm just gonna talk about the beginning and ending. And simultaneously, if we rob the last house, we will never be able to rob the first house or this house as well. So that being in mind, what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of split this up. So the way we're gonna split it up, we're gonna do one of our uh, robberies where we start off by robbing at the first house. So whatever's at the zero the index, and we go up to, but not including the last house. So in this case, we have five houses, but we're only gonna rob the four houses. And the reason we're not robbing the last one is because we're already considering the first house as being robbed. Okay, so that's one condition. And the other condition is, we're not going to rob the first house, so we're gonna ignore that, and we're gonna rob everything from the first index all the way up to and including the last house. So those are gonna be our two uh, possibilities of robbing houses. And we're gonna call the helper function on these two. So let's just make two values, so P1 and P2, and they're each gonna re uh, represent the different profits that we have. So over here, we're gonna call the helper function, and we're gonna give it to our dynamic programming area. So in this case, let's call it for everything up to, but not including the last house. So we're considering the first house that we have. And to do that, we're gonna go to nums. And since we're considering the first house, we're just do a colon. And what is the last value? So we're gonna go up to the length of whatever nums is. And this over here actually gives us everything, but we don't want the last value, so we're gonna subtract it by one. 
And the other thing that we have is we're going to call it from everything starting from the first uh, index. So we're not going to consider whatever is at the zeroth index. So from the first index all the way to the ending. So to do that, we're going to do nums, start at one and go all the way to the ending. So that's what it shows. And finally, what are we going to return? Well, we're going to return the maximum between P1 and P2. So we can just do max between P1 and P2. So now before we actually submit this, we want to change up our helper function a bit. So since we're actually directly giving it the nums array, that means that DP0 is already equal to whatever nums value that we're giving it. So we can kind of get rid of this over here. So we can remove that. And this over here, one thing that we need to change is we're going to be referring to the DP array itself. And the reason for that is because the DP array also holds the exact same values. So over here, we're going to be referring to that DP array. And similarly, over here, instead of length of nums, we're going to do length of DP. Or you could also just do length of nums minus 1. Pretty sure it's the same thing. And again, this over here becomes DP as well. And yeah, so hopefully you understand the small changes that we made. And now let's submit our solution and it should get accepted. And as you can see, our submission did get accepted. So finally, thanks a lot for watching, guys. And if you did not understand, please do watch the House Robber 1 question. I explained it in a lot more detail and I went through it step by step. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching, guys. Do let me know what you thought about the video. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.